Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to my new video. My name is Jimmy and in this tutorial I'm going to be going over how you can create a kind of stylized looking uh, sunrise or sunset shot. Now this is going to be fairly similar to my previous tutorial so there are going to be a few things the same but there will be a few things different. So if you are focusing more on sunsets or sunrises this might help you a little bit more. Okay, so in this video I'm going to be going over changing something like this into something like this and then using Photoshop to change it even a bit more and turn it into something like this. Um, so there are only very subtle differences between the Lightroom and Photoshop version, but I think it does make it look quite a bit better, so I will be going over that. Okay, so let's just double tap I now and I'll quickly go over how I shot this image. So you can see I shot this on a Canon 5D Mark III with my 16 to 35 L lens. Now I shot this at 16 millimeters, F22, ISO 50, and 30 second exposure. Now you can see it is underexposed and the clouds aren't really as blurry as I wanted them, so I took another shot which is here. Now I'll quickly reset this shot as well. And you can see the clouds look a whole lot cooler in this one, however the sky really doesn't look as good in the distance. So that's why I'll be showing you how to pretty much swap this sky uh, with this sky in Photoshop, but keep this kind of glowing effect we got here. Now I was really disappointed with this shot, I was about 2 minutes late um, getting there and you know two minutes earlier the sky looked a whole lot better the glow was a lot better so this is a fairly average sunset shot and i'm just really disappointed that i missed out on a really really good shot um but i did the best i could and i just didn't want to not take any photos i'm still kind of happy with the outcome so i guess that's okay Okay, so let's quickly get into it before we waste any more time. The first thing that we are going to do is adjust our white balance. Now, a thing I like to do for um, sunset photos is kind of apply the color coming out of the sunset to the overall image. Now, in this case, you can see it's a bit of an orangey pinkish color. So what I'm going to do is purposely add a bit more of magenta to the image and make it a bit more pinkish. And that way it's going to make the sunset look like it's coloring the whole sky and make everyone think it was a much better sunset than it actually was. Uh, now if you are looking to edit a more realistic sunset or a more realistic landscape, you can check out the tutorial on the screen now, which I just go over kind of a base adjustment thing to landscapes to make them look a little bit more enhanced and a bit better of a shot. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go up to our white balance up here and go to auto and see where that takes us. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. There wasn't much difference, but it did add a bit more magenta and it did warm up the image a little bit, both of which I'm trying to achieve. Uh, now we can add a little bit more if we want and just see how it's looking. And you can see we're already getting a bit more of a purplish look to the sky and I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing we're going to do is pump up the exposure and the reason for this is to increase this kind of glowing effect coming out of the very little bit of sunlight we actually see. Um, so almost one stop and I'm just going to stop it at about 0.8 and that's looking pretty good right there. Now the next thing we're going to do is bring up the contrast a hell of a lot to about 75 and that's just going to pretty much make the clouds look quite a bit better. You can see it's kind of uh, making that glowing effect even more noticeable and let's keep going. Now we're going to um, adjust all these dark parts by dropping the highlights to about negative 60, bringing up the shadows a hell of a lot and then also dropping the whites and we're just changing all of these to negative and plus 60 and that's pretty much going to create a bit of a HDR effect so it's going to lighten all the dark parts but darken all of the brighter parts and we're just going to pretty much even out all of the tones within the image and make everything pretty visible now the effectiveness of this will vary depending on the camera you have I can tell you now if I shot this on my 550D, I wouldn't be able to recover that much darkness from the shadows and stuff without getting quite a bit of noise. Um, so it will vary depending on your camera. You may have to add a bit more of noise reduction in and stuff like that. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Now, if you're also wondering how I am adjusting my values, I'm just holding my mouse over the slider bar here and pressing the up and down arrow keys. So moving on, I'm going to bring the clarity up to 15 to help define these edges. Uh, we're going to bring up our vibrance to 15 to pretty much add a bit more color into the overall scene. And we're going to change our tone curve uh, to medium. So that's looking pretty good right there. Now we're going to keep going down and we're going to go all the way down to split toning. Now I'm a big fan of split toning. I think it adds a really cool feel to the image and a lot of people don't tend to use it. Especially for landscapes, I see a lot of people just sticking to the colors that they had and that they captured. And split turning is a really cool way just to make your landscapes look a little bit cooler and bring it to the next level. 
Um, so I'm going to change my highlight hue to 304, my highlight saturation to 15, my balance to negative 71, and we're going to leave our shadows like that. So pretty much what we're doing there is uh, creating a bit of a magenta or a pinkish tone here that you can see. And it's only very slightly saturated and it's affecting only the highlights, however, not too much since we did balance it mainly towards the shadows. So if we reset our balance there, you can see it adds a bit more of that pinkish tone to the overall image. Um, but bringing that slider towards the shadow is going to make that effect a little less noticeable. Okay, so moving down to sharpening now, I'm going to use the same settings I use in every single video. 70 for the amount, 1.5 for the radius, 10 for the detail, and 30 for the masking. And those are the settings from SLR Lounge. Um, so thanks to those guys. Um, noise reduction luminance will be 35. Detail will be 50. Contrast will be 0. And color and detail we're going to leave default. So we're pretty much just going to soften out our image and get rid of the very little noise that we actually had. Um, so that is pretty much it for our effect. And we're just going to do one final thing and enable our profile correction. Since I did shoot this at 16 millimeters, you can see there is a little bit of distortion. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring down our post crop vignetting. The amount is negative 20. The midpoint will be 20 to help bring it in a bit closer. The roundness will be up at about 20. The feather will be up to about 80. And the highlights will move up to about 50. Now you can see if we just toggle that on and off, pretty much just darkening the edges very slightly. Now with vignettes, um, some shots look better without them. However, I tend to keep them very um, unnoticeable. You don't want it to make it look like you've purposely added a vignette. Um, unless that's the specific look you're going for. You want it to kind of be subtle and just make it look like it's naturally darker in the corners. Uh, you don't want it to kind of pop out that you've over-edited the image with a big vignette. Um, so now we're going to move on to some adjustment brushes and graduated filters. Now this is another thing I think a lot of people overlook and it did take me quite a bit of time to, you know, get into using adjustment brushes. I kind of overlooked it and I didn't really um, consider even using them but they are very very useful especially for landscape photos and just kind of brightening certain areas so we're going to select our adjustment brush we're going to hold the alt key and click this reset button here just to make it um, all default okay so the first thing we're going to do is um, boost our temperature to a bit more of the warmer side we're going to bring our uh, tint up to about 17 uh, we're going to bring our exposure up just by 0.1, so a very slight amount. We're going to drop our contrast to about negative 15. We're going to bring up our shadows to 15, and then our saturation as well to 15. Okay, so now what we're going to do with this one is just kind of paint over this sun area here. And you can see we're just kind of increasing this kind of glowing effect that it's naturally having, but we're just giving it a bit of a boost to make it look a little bit better. And that's just going to make it look like the sun's projecting color a little bit further within our image. Now you can just uh, keep bringing up the size of your brush here to make it gradually fade out. And if we just quickly remove that, you can see it makes quite a bit of a difference and I think it makes it look a little bit better. It makes the sun look a little bit more brighter, a bit more colorful. So again, we're going to click this new button up here, hold Alt to reset, and let's make another one. So again, we're going to raise our temperature to 17, our tint to 36, so a bit more of that magenta color this time. We're going to bring up our exposure by 0.2 this time. We're going to drop our clarity down by about negative 50. And then we're going to bring our saturation up to 10. And now this time, what we're actually going to do is paint over the entire image. And you're going to see this effect that we're getting here. And it's really adding that kind of pinkish uh, tone to the overall image and making it look like the colors from the sun are really projecting throughout the entire sky like that. So if we now reset that and just remove that adjustment, you can see it makes a huge difference and I think it makes the landscape look just that much better. Now we might actually reverse the effect of the clarity a bit. I don't really want negative 50 clarity over the whole image. It'll soften it up quite a bit. Um, that's looking pretty good right there. And now one final adjustment we're going to do is we're going to go new, go reset again, and we're going to actually bring up our exposure to about 0.7 this time. We're going to bring up our saturation to about 25. 
And that's pretty much it there. Now what we're going to do is just paint over the grass here in the foreground. And you can see this is just lightening it up a little bit and not making it look so dark. And we're going to paint it over the trees on the shoreline here. Now again, the effectiveness of this will probably vary depending on your camera. Then we can just hold Alt and clean up this mask a little bit. Now usually I would spend quite a bit more time on all of this, but since it's a tutorial, I don't want to just sit here and be a little bit of a perfectionist while I'm recording. Okay, so that is pretty much it for this image here. And what we're going to do now is bring up our film strip down here, go across to our longer exposure one, and just press the previous key here. Now you can see what that's going to do is apply all of the exact same effects and adjustment brushes and everything like that to the same image. And we're going to go ahead and uh, export both of these and bring them both up into Photoshop. So I'll see you in a second. Okay guys, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop CS5, however this will work equally as well in any version really. Um, okay, so let's say if you're in the same position as me, and you captured this one shot, got the sun looking nice, but then you wanted the clouds more blurry, you captured this shot, the sun doesn't look quite as good. Um, so you want these clouds on this image. Now this is incredibly easy to do, and what we're going to do is uh, select this image here, press Ctrl A to select the entire image, press Ctrl C to copy, we're going to move over to our other image and press Ctrl V. Now this is especially easy since I did take this on a tripod and you can see they are in the exact same position or very close. So what we're going to do now is put our clouds layer above our actual layer and click this button down here to create a layer mask. Now making sure our layer mask is selected here, we're going to press B to bring up our brush tool and we're going to change it to a black color. And what this does is pretty much means that anything we paint on will disappear. Okay, so we're just going to pretty much paint over the entire image, except the very top of the sky. So we're going to paint all the way up here, and we're using a very big soft brush, uh, so it's a bit more gradual. Now we can press X to swap to our white, or our secondary color, whatever yours may be, and just kind of paint over this, press X again, and just make sure that, you know, we're getting the effect we want. So now if we just toggle that layer on and off, uh, you can see we've pretty much got the sky looking very nice. Now what you can do as well is select our white color here and actually bring down our brush opacity to about 30 or 40%. And then paint in over here just so it's kind of gradually fading in and we don't have like really blurred clouds and then quickly switching to not very blurred clouds and stuff like that. Uh, so that's pretty much it like that. And one final thing we can do in Photoshop is actually create an adjustment layer by going down to here and choosing our photo filter. Now using this you can actually kind of apply a pretty cool photo filter you can see as we quickly go through these. Um, you can create kind of like a magenta color here, bring down the opacity on it, and just help to, you know, bring out a bit more colors within the scene and stuff like that. So really experiment with your landscape photos, don't just stick to the normal colors, sometimes it is better to add a bit of split toning and stuff like that. Uh, you'll be pretty surprised at what you can come up with. So that is pretty much it, and you can also check out my photography on my DeviantArt here just quickly. So I've also made a lot of tutorials for a lot of my more popular or my favorite images. So these glasses, this tree, this murder scene, this dark portrait, and usually if I have created a video for that specific image, uh, if you go to that image on my DeviantArt, I will usually have a link there saying you can see the editing process or a tutorial and stuff like that, and that'll just link you back to my YouTube channel to that specific photo. So thank you very much for watching, I hope it helped, if it did be sure to hit that like button to help my channel out, uh, feel free to subscribe for future Lightroom tutorials, and as always, leave your tutorial suggestions or let me know which pictures you'd like to see me edit in the comments below, uh, just to help give me some ideas for future tutorials. Um, so thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.